Good morning. You may have noticed there's a big, uh, big thing up here. It's actually blue underneath all that black stuff, but it's, uh, we celebrate uh, today uh, the baptism of several people who have committed uh, to, to following Jesus with their lives. Now, at Hershey Free, we practice what we call believer's baptism. And that is, uh, it is not the means by which a person embraces faith in Christ. It's an outward expression of an inward reality that they've, they have chosen uh, to submit their lives to Christ, to receive him as their Savior, ask him for forgiveness. And baptism is the time we come together to, to celebrate that reality as a body, as a, as a group of believers gathered together in the Lord's name to, to celebrate what they have done. The Lord Jesus, he gave us this command. He said, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. So today, in this service and the next service, we have several folks who want to follow that command. Uh, They want to be baptized into the name of Jesus. Uh, They want to follow him. And this is, baptism celebrates and demonstrates the the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ in in a public way. They show that their, their lives are now hidden in Christ. They're hidden with Christ. They're uh, turning from their, their old life and embracing new life in Christ. Sometimes, some of these folks have done that years before, but they're just now uh, following Christ in baptism. And again, this isn't the way a person is reconciled to God. It's kind of, I liken it to a wedding ring. It doesn't make me married to wear this ring, uh, but it's a powerful symbol of that, of that relationship that goes back for me 31 years to the day I, I, uh, I received it and I exchanged that ring with my wife. So um, I'm going to pray and then invite uh, Mark up front here. So Father in heaven, thank you for, for the gift of baptism. Thank you for the, um, more than that, it's a, the symbol that it represents, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he has given his life, laid it down for us, and taken it up again in power. I pray in the same way that these dear friends today, as they follow you in baptism, uh, as Mark and Courtney, as they're baptized today, that they would um, experience the, the ongoing power and reality of the gospel in their daily lives. Amen. Let's watch their testimonies together. Hello, my name is Mark Goshesky, and I am today expressing my faith publicly through baptism. My faith journey is not a very dramatic journey, as I was saved at a very young age. It was actually in kindergarten at my Christian school in Buffalo, New York, when my teacher went through the gospel message to our class, just explaining our sinful nature and our need for a savior, that I decided to raise my hand to go over to her desk and pray with my teacher to accept Christ. I remember how emotional and passionate my teacher was about the gospel message and just how this was the most important decision you could ever make, and it really is. My faith story has definitely had moments of growth as well as moments of questions and doubts, pondering exactly what I believed. Some of the most challenging moments in my faith came when I moved away to college, as well as my first few years out of college in the workforce. I've learned the significance of having my hope in Christ. Living on my own in a secular world, you can just see the hope that is missing in the world. And I've had moments of disappointment where relying on my faith and having that hope and knowledge of a savior means so much and is so freeing and comforting. Additionally, learning to enjoy serving him and wanting to spend time with him in his word and prayer is such a blessing and it's been a way for me to stay grounded in a world that can get us down. Having Christ as my foundation has meant a lot to me. And today, just as Christ was baptized, I wanted to be baptized as a symbol of my faith and public declaration to declare that Christ is my savior and I'm living my life to glorify him and grow more and more every day in my walk with him. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Mark. So I have two questions for you. So the first is, do you trust in Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? I do. And have you placed your faith in him and have full confidence that he is, the, he is your savior and that the only, uh, only way that you have back to the Father is through his salvation or his forgiveness? Yes, I have. Then on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Hi, I'm Courtney Yost. I declared my faith in Jesus Christ as a teenager, recognizing that I am a sinner and fall short to God's glory, but am redeemed because of Christ. 
Romans 3, 23 and 24. Prior to my commitment to Christ, I was filled with unanswered questions and unsettled thoughts. Since my commitment and a growing relationship with Him, I've encountered a peace that consistently covers me, a peace that passes all understanding as described in Philippians 4, 7. Like anyone, I've had seasons in my spiritual journey of both growth and idleness, joy and sadness. Motherhood specifically is an area of my life that God has used to significantly grow me. Through motherhood, he has used miscarriages, anxiety, depression, and more to draw me closer to him. Through these difficult events, he has revealed his perfect, unexplainable peace to me. More recently, I've been filled with an overwhelming amount of gratitude for Christ and all that he has done for me, a sinner. My gratitude to Christ brings me to tears almost daily. I'm reminded of Isaiah 40 verses 29 and 31, that he gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like wings on eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Each day he gives me the strength to fight the good fight and to pursue him more. Through any season, any trial, any valley, I will obey my Savior and keep my hope steadfast in the Lord. My pursuit of obedience continues daily as he has laid it on my heart to be baptized as an outward obedience to him, and I am more than happy to obey. Courtney, have you decided to follow Jesus and trust him with your whole heart? Yes, I have. Is it your desire to let the whole world know that you are his and that you will follow him the rest of your life? Yes. On the basis of your profession and faith, it is my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning. My name is Stephen Conway. I grew up in a family that went to church on Sundays, and I participated in all children and youth ministries. As I became a young adult, I could feel something was missing in my heart. When I heard people ask if Jesus was your Savior, I would think that I was good to go because I went to church, knew who Jesus Christ was, and prayed. The Holy Spirit was telling me that I needed to receive a believer's baptism, which I did in 2013 at the church my wife and I were attending in Philadelphia. I acknowledge the fact that I am a sinner and I couldn't rescue myself from the sin that I had committed. I turned to Jesus, repented of my sin, received forgiveness for my sins, and asked Jesus to come into my heart. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, a believer's baptism is not like renewing a passport. You don't do it once every 10 years. I gotta tell you that my faith has grown significantly in the past year. I could say without a doubt that Jesus died for person A and person B. When it came to me, I wasn't 100% because I felt like I had gone too far and done too much to be saved. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for my sins as well. The first time I was baptized, I probably didn't take it as personally as I should have. This time, it's personal. A verse I keep coming back to is Philippians 1.6. Let he who began a good work in you carry it on to completion. I am here today to let the world know that Jesus died for me, and I am getting baptized in obedience to God's word. Stephen, have you decided to follow Jesus and make him Lord of your life? Yes, I have. Is it your desire to be baptized today to show everyone here that you've made the commitment that you're going to follow Jesus and let the world know you want to serve him. Yes, it is. With this, with your desire to be baptized, we baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Seven years old, I asked Jesus into my heart 
on June 14, 2019, when I was three years old, after a night at Bible school. I asked Jesus into my heart because I knew I had sins. Jesus died on the cross to take my sins away. I felt like I had been missing something, so I got a dog, but that wasn't it. Then I realized that it was God. My favorite Bible verse is Mark 536 and it says don't be afraid just believe and that's why I want to be baptized. Well that's very special. I am Gramps to Eden and this is Bobka and Papa and Mimi and her mom and her dad and lots of other relatives here and we are so so proud of you. So you've shared your story, and I just want to ask again, Eden, have you chosen to turn away from your sin and ask Jesus to be your Savior and forgive you and become your Lord, your boss in your life? Have you done that? All right. On the basis of your confession of faith, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.